I'm Felicia Montes with Mujeres de Maíz. I'm Michelle Lopez with Mujeres de Maíz. And we're here today at our exhibition. It's a retrospective exhibition of Mujeres de Maíz. Mujeres de Maíz is a woman of color art, wellness, and activist organization that's been around since 1997, working with women of color and other communities in Los Angeles and greater Los Angeles to empower our communities and families through art and wellness. And so this retrospective exhibition is celebrating our 20th anniversary here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Uh, so Mujeres de Maíz, this exhibition is called 20 Years of Artivism and Her Story in LA and speaks about our own her story and our story and history of the organization and of the collective since 1997. A lot of our influences, predecessors, and also the different work, whether it be performances, zines, and magazines, and also social justice causes and issues over the years. So many people always talk about the energy and the feeling they have when they see Mujeres de Maíz, or when they're part of a performance, or look at a zine, or are a part of some type of our event. And that was really hard to capture. And one of the ways we wanted to do that was interactive programs, um, which is our programming throughout the year and throughout the exhibition outside of the gallery but also asking people to become involved and to make an intention um, to honor their ancestors and the people of this land before they started the exhibition. And we asked them and you to take part or take one of these corn kernels and um, think of those who came before, maybe your family or ancestors, and, and also uh, take one of the corn kernels and walk through the exhibition with it. You can put it in your pocket um, or anybody as a part of the exhibition can hold it and take in the art and the performances and the videos and all of different visual art through um, by walking through the exhibition with this and then depositing it at the end or keeping it with you. So one of the first collectives that started and actually is the seed of Mujeres de Maíz, which is, means woman of the corn, is in La Quech. In La Quech is a Chicana spoken word poetry and drumming group. It started also in 1997 and it's actually the collective that started Mujeres de Maíz. So this is, um, after 10 years, putting together our CD. It's a self-published CD that actually looks like a codex, the ancient codex, um, the Mesoamerican Codice, this accordion style. Um, sleeve of the CD, which includes all the poetry and a lot of art from the women of the collective. And the group actually started again in 1997 when it was the seed of Mujeres de Maíz. And what's really important for us, the whole exhibit is actually like a codex, and actually a living codex. Um, and so one of those pieces that's important for us is Linda Vallejo, who's our femtor or mentor, somebody who's been really important for us. Um, spiritually, politically, culturally, and also organizationally. And this is a piece called Madre Celestial, Honoring Mother Earth. And so it was really important for us to show work that came before us and the predecessors and people who really influenced us. And then we'll walk over to more talking about our, the civil rights movement and other organizations and people who have really connected with us or even if we didn't know about them or learned about them through history books or through documentaries um, that were important to our community. So this would be an example of that. It's an, a, a, a representing the civil rights movement, specifically the Chicana, Chicana, and Chicanx movement. Um, we could talk about the feminist movement and other civil rights movements, but um, because it's also connected to our family and our heritage, this is part of our lineage politically and also familial-wise. Because um, this picture is of my dad, Carlos Montes, uh, the Minister of Immigration for the Brown Berets in the 1968 walkouts. Um, East LA walkouts. Well, this is a newer picture of a brown beret in 2011 by a photographer that's involved in what is a maestro has exhibited with us called um, or Isabel Avila. Her name is Isabel Avila, the photographer. So we are trying to connect the old and the new and how cycles repeat and also connect with us and how important the past is to shape our future. So this is our somewhat of a timeline of Mujeres de Maíz. Um, again, we started in 1997, so we have some images that are from 1997. This specifically is an image from the Encuentro with the Zapatistas that many of the Mujeres de Maíz and other, at the time, Chicana artists and activists of the greater east side Los Angeles organized and went to Chiapas to create an art encuentro. Um, so this image and some of the imagery is from our very first flyers that actually were calling out people to come out in and um, be a part of our events. So we have kind of this paraphernalia or memorabilia and ephemera from the years past. These are different flyers of our first event 
or our first event and our second event over the years. And so we have these for people to take as kind of memorabilia. Um, you know, again, a lot of museums you can't touch, you can't um, breathe, you can't take pictures, and we really want people to somewhat interact and feel like they are a part of Mujeres de Maíz because we say todos somos Mujeres de Maíz, that we are all Mujeres de Maíz. So all of these are different flyers or key events. This is an image from one of our first events. It's actually the second event of Mujeres de Maíz, Seeds of Resistance, in the old CSO, Community Service Organization building, in Boyle Heights. And this is an image of La Red Chicana Indígena, the Siwatatokan, which was a gathering of Chicana indigenous women. So some of these images, such as this one um, in 2011, is a different trans community um, MC in our event. And so from the very beginning in 1997, we've had women of color from Sri Lankan to Filipina, um, African American, and um, from all genders and sexualities and communities coming together to be a part of Mujeres and Maíz. One of the important parts of Mujeres and Maíz, of course, is the spirituality and the activism and wellness. And so as much as we wanted to categorize and show people um, the different parts of Mujeres and Maíz so that it's easily digestible and be able to understand and that young people or all ages can go come away with an understanding of the key tenets and parts of Mujeres and Maíz, None of them can really be separated um, because they're all interconnected in a lot of ways. So this um, is the banner from the Zapatista Encuentro, which we have mentioned previously. It's actually the original banner that the Zapatistas made and put up for us when we got, um, got to the Encuentro. One of the key parts is really connecting mind, body, and spirit for Mujeres de Maíz. And this piece really embodies that in a lot of ways, literally um, and figuratively. This is Orgullo de Sangre by Maggie Santiago, which is um, a sculptural piece kind of speaking about the moon cycle. Um, and Mujeres de Maíz really connects to the moon in a lot of ways. Of course, all women and people in general are our whole world and the waters. But this piece specifically talking about the moon time and the menstrual cycles of women, the 28-day cycles, and actually having the full moon, whether it's new moon, um, crescent moon, full moon, etc., through this being. So this is a great piece and a really kind of educational piece when we talk to youth and community members or young women. Um, they really connect this piece and another piece that they understand um, what it means and connects to with their body, but we're also really trying to connect it uh, to another level with the moon and how our connections are mind, body, and spirit. Also very key from what is amazing is that we've always done our work in traditional cultural centers or community spaces and one of the most important parts is also that we try to go to the streets or to the community and do work there and share it in different non-traditional spaces. So this work is an example of that, it's my own work. Um, it is a performance intervention piece called Occupy La Maslan. It's an intervention, performance, prayer and protest all at the same time. And this is an image of it at LACMA. Um, we basically, on Indigenous Peoples Day, went uh, to LACMA after there had been an exhibit on, of the Olmecs. And we really couldn't connect, as we said before, that we really, in, in, in museums or galleries, you're asked not to touch things or interact or take pictures. And so we really felt like we needed to do that with the Olmec exhi exhibition. And since we couldn't, we went and did our own ceremony. Um, after hours, and we projected images on the walls, outside the walls of LACMA. We prayed, we danced, um, we performed and projected our own images, or images that we really thought were um, crucial and important about our communities. We were asking questions like, where are the Chicano artists now? Where are the indigenous artists of today? And not only thousands of years ago. Um, so this is a, a piece by Robert Losa, the uh, photograph of the intervention and a clothing piece of what I wear as Rara Mujer. And Rara Mujer has gone to a lot of different spaces as street interventions, again, as protest, performance, and prayer, and performance, all, performance art all in one. Another really important piece and issue um, in Chicana Chicana art and with Mujeres and Maíz and the key tenant is posters, really making art accessible to community. And this is a piece by Melanie Cervantes of Dignidad Rebelde with the Zapatistas, or honoring the Zapatista women and the revolution. And of course, it's very important to us as we've been involved in solidarity work um, in Chiapas, in the Zapatista communities, and throughout um, really the Southwest and Mexico. One part of that Zapatista work in transnational solidarity has doing performances or performance actions and performance art in the streets. So this is a, a documentary image or documentation of a protest where we took over the streets in front of the Mexican consulate, not only Mujeres de Maíz, but many others. And this is a piece uh, by Arnoldo Vargas, uh, really documenting that work and that 
those performances. Um, continuing in our solidarity work, we've also um, worked in solidarity with Black Lives Matter, um, whether it's uh, against police brutality or uh, recognition. So we are there on the ground with other organizations in solidarity with them. So this image documents um, one of the events. So this photo is of a corn planting on Mother Earth Day, or what is known as Earth Day to most. Um, and so Mujeres de Maíz has been going to um, Proyecto Jardín for many years, and um, in this image and for a few years, we were involved in not only not only the corn planting, but also kind of a blessing and songs to offer um, another part, kind of the spirituality and indigenous connection to uh, growing and to working with the earth. So this is an image of some of the mujeres de maíz planting the corn um, with their children and also with the smudge of the medicine. This image is a photograph of something, again, that connects with our transnational solidarity work. This was uh, an image of Enrique Ramirez, who is a Huichol medicine man, who um, was part of and featured in the documentary uh, Huichol, the Peyote Gardens. And he came to be part of the documentary showings, and Mujeres de Maíz sponsored a showing and screening of it. And we went to an Ayotzinapa uh, park protest here, actually across the street from La Casa de Cultura y Artes at Olvera Street. And so this is kind of, again, showing even within Mexico the different indigenous communities and also the different things that are happening politically across the world and in Mexico and other parts of the Americas, but also the solidarity that happens amongst communities and indigenous people. And as us in LA and as women and a part of Mujeres de Maíz connecting with others and their, what's happening in the communities and across the world. It's really important about um, Mujeres de Maíz and what Mujeres de Maíz allows space for is the embracing of spirituality and indigenous identity um, within the artwork that we exhibit um, both in our exhibitions and also in our zines. Um, so this work is another uh, photograph created by Isabel Avila, which really is embracing indigenous identity and spirituality um, in combination with one another. So this is a piece called uh, Mi Primera Luna, or My First Moon by Gabriela Malinazochi and Zapata. And she's an artist um, from Mexico who was really involved in ceremony, in indigenous ceremony, and in Mexica ceremonies, and has really translated that to her work. Um, also, what's really beautiful about this piece is that it's embracing uh, moon time for women, but also that part of the body. Um, and it's also um, referencing um, possibly the seven caves, uh, the seven different Mexica tribes through this symbol that is in um, the womb area. Uh, the piece that we're looking at right now is created by Maria Ramos um, called La Ofrenda. So what we see is this woman um, carrying this basket of corn. Um, and the corn is in different colors, but um, Mujeres and Maiz, uh, we look at corn as, in the tradition, corn was sacred, but also um, each tribe had their own corn deity. So, and also man was created from corn in indigenous tradition. So this piece is also another piece that is embracing indigenous tradition and spirituality. The piece we're looking at right now is uh, called Warrior, created by Sarah Espinoza. Uh, the reason why it's called Warrior is it's embracing um, indigenous tradition. Uh, we can say specifically Aztec tradition because she does have a rendition of Huitzilopochtli, who, uh, was one of the main deities in the Aztec Empire. Um, and also Coyo Shakwi is represented in the moon. But the idea of a warrior, a woman, when a woman gave birth, it was considered that she was going to battle. Um, so if a woman even died um, during childbirth, it was considered that her spirit and her soul would go to the same place as warriors. Um, so we're seeing that um, embracing of indigenous tradition um, within this piece really important about this piece, or what I really appreciate is that Sarah Espinosa created this piece um, in 2006, and in 2017 she had a child, and she was able to bring her family to the exhibition, her baby, her newborn, with her whole family. There's a picture of her and about 25 people here supporting her in her artistic endeavor and her creativity as an artist, but also as a mom.
So in this room, this is the second room of the plant, is the Maïs exhibition, and it's really highlighting um, some of the artwork that has been created by the mujeres um, throughout the years. So what we wanted to do in this room in particular is create um, an experiential space where you're experiencing the room. So when you walk into this room, you're actually stepping into a ceremonial space. So you see these big sculptures that are in each one of the four directions. So you're actually stepping into a ceremonial space with them because they are in ceremony with each other. Um, also, when you step into this room, there is uh, a fragrance. Um, so there's a fr frankincense that is misted through the air, as well as you hear music come into the room. So your senses are being used, so it's vision, sight, um, sound, smell, um, are all being used when you come into this room. Well, one of the pieces that we're looking at right now is called Mesa de las Madres, and this has been shown in several uh, different renditions um, around Los Angeles, so it was actually uh, an altar for Day of the Dead at Grand Park, um, so we recreated it um, several times. But what it represents is, for me, what, uh, is a decolonization of the home. So my family has been assimilated, fully assimilated, third, fourth generation, United Stadium born. Uh, but the one place where we did not assimilate or were colonized was in the kitchen. So my great-grandmother always had beans on the stove. She was always making tortillas. So it represents part of that, and this is actually my great-grandmother's um, table. But also um, looking at ways that we look at our ancestors and our predecessors within our own, own homes, and healing that happens within our own home, and actually what even happens um, within um, and around a kitchen table or the kitchen area, which becomes almost like the heart of the home. Uh, where uh, my family, we felt most comfortable was inside the home. But if you look under the table, also there's representations of um, predecessors, um, women of color that um, have moved on. So the under the table represents the underworld, and you see the four directions and elements are represented in, in that space, and images of Frida Kahlo, Gloria Azaldúa, um, and different women that have passed on um, before us. What we're looking at right now is a sculpture created by Gina Aparicio. So it's one of the Nawales. This is actually uh, a ceramic piece. So the hands and head are made of ceramic. Um, in the series, there, right now we're looking at the owl, there's the deer, there's a bear, there's a jaguar. Each one is playing an instrument. Um, and as I mentioned before, they're in ceremony with one another, but also they're in placement of the four directions, but they each represent one of the four directions. So this one, he's wearing black, um, which is representing one of the four directions. Um, another's adorned in white, uh, red, and yellow. So each represents one of the four directions. Um, and as we move on, we're looking at a piece created by Margaret Marcon, uh, Mujer, uh, Mujer de Maniz. And in this image, we see the Lepoil Shakui again, and this woman coming out the corner, um, and she's holding within her hand uh, the symbol for Palapa, so, which is boys. The piece that we're looking at right now was created by Marisol Torres, a uh, longtime member of Mujeres de Maiz. The piece is called Goddess Bling. Uh, this piece really is dealing with identity. So we see this woman who's split in half. She's now embracing her uh, indigenous roots, but also uh, contemporary Chicano style with the big hoop earrings and sunglasses. Um, so referencing the embracing of the two worlds within her own identity. The piece that we're looking at now is is a painting that was created by Crystal Galindo. It's the Guatlipue State, Josie Chattels the Goddess. It's a contemporary rendition of Guatlipue, who is the mother of Guadal Shaukui. So in the statue, the ancient statue of Guatlipue, she's wearing uh, a necklace with hearts and hands. And we can see that represented here. Um, but also the way that um, Crystal Galindo paints women in her paintings are very powerful. And she challenges traditional notions of beauty where we see this beautiful woman who is not a size three or zero, um, but she's a full figured woman and she's owning her power and um, she's beautiful and she's channeling this goddess. In this section of the exhibition, we really wanted to pay homage to our predecessors and lineage and we wanted to do that through a tree, like a tree of life, um, looking at 
the, uh, you know, the seeds and the trunk and things that have come out of this tree and have been built out of this tree. Um, so it represents, um, below the trees, books by some of our predecessors, just Sherry Moraga, Gloria Amzaldua. So we have Borderlands, La Frontera, the Investicia of Consciousness in, by Gloria Amzaldua. Um, most of the members of the and Maiz have read these books and have looked to um, our predecessors um, as well as our ancestors. So um, those are represented either through spaces or other organizations that came before us, such as Mujeres Muralistas, which was one of the first um, uh, Chicana muralist organizations um, that came into be. So we look at them as predecessors. I think what's important for us, too, and the predecessors is that, and this whole tree of life, is that we may have not known them. Some of them we might have read about and not interacted with. Others we may have not known about, but later connected with and have become our mentors and mentors. So for example, Mujeres Moralistas, since they're in San Francisco in the Bay Area, we most of us just read about, but the idea of having a group like that was really important to the idea of Mujeres de Maiz. But groups like Flores de Aslan were actually literal predecessors to Mujeres de Maiz. They did a lot of the same work as Mujeres de Maiz, but we didn't know about them until later, after Mujeres de Maiz had been created. But really, they were a dance group, a Mexica group, a spirit group, an art group of women, and women of color, and specifically Chicanas. Um, so some of the predecessors are women who are still doing work, like Linda Vallejo, which we saw her artwork before, and um, who are also spiritual leaders, artistic and cultural leaders. Um, also, La Red Chicana Indígena, and Madre Tierra Press, which was a part of the women's building, which is really important to Los Angeles feminist art, her story. Um, and Linda Vallejo was also part of Madre Tierra Press and the women's building, as well as Irene Cervantes, who are all predecessors and femtors to us still today. Um, some of the spaces that were really key to us are uh, Luna Sol Cafe, PRC, or the Generación, Peace and Justice Center, and of course, self-help graphics, um, which are spaces that some of them are no longer here or present in a physical form, but the idea and the work that they did or the inspiration they gave is still in the hearts of Mujeres and Maes and in the work ethic. And of course, self-help graphics is still involved and we're artists in residence there at this time and really an organization that's very supportive and always has been from the very beginning of Mujeres and Maes. So some of these are again some of the causes that we've been involved in and we've talked about that throughout the whole exhibit as well as some of the harvest and the idea of the harvest is some of the work that we've um, done as a result of our 20 years. Everything from wellness workshops, workshops and work in the community and the schools to the full moon circle and the video here by Claudia Mercado of our performances and live art shows. This portion of the exhibition highlights the Mujeres de Maiz zines. Um, these are independently published zines that we produce. We have the longest running women of color zine in the nation, and they feature original artwork and original poetry um, created by uh, self-identified women of color. Um, and so what we wanted to create here was a codex uh, representing the Mujeres de Maiz zines um, in a codice. So following the idea that this exhibition that you're entering into is in fact a codex of Mujeres de Maiz history. Um, so this piece was uh, designed by Lily Flor and a team of artists helped finish this. But this represents all the zines that we've produced throughout the 20 years of Mujeres de Maiz. So the codex um, of creative consciousness, again, is an interactive piece. It has the zines and a zine library where you could just pick it up off of this and um, begin to read it here. And that's what we really wanted to have an inter interactive um, exhibition and people to feel comfortable and sit down and read the zines and check them out. All the covers, again, of the zines are um, at the bottom. There are 14 zines thus far in our 20 years. And Maya Webb was decided on um, by Lily Flood and her team and ourselves because she, she is a creative diosa um, or goddess and is a goddess of wellness and herbs but also creativity. So she has these different tools here that are either like um, similar to a paintbrush or um, a flint but also um, herbs and of course um, the maguey, which is really, really key, um, which is a plant, a cactus plant of sorts. Um, the image here, also really key, um, are part of the tools that Maya Wed and we, are, we use, which um, in our work in wellness and kind of the mortar and pestle, or the, um, 
the Molcajete, and these are the the year that um, Mujeres de Maíz was born of sorts, uh, created, and this was done in, in the Mexica calendar ways. A, a really important component of Mujeres de Maíz is giving space to women artists, whether it's poetry, um, two-dimensional artwork, three-dimensional artwork, uh, song, dance, per, per, for theatrical performances, any type of performances. So for the past 20 years, we've been giving space to women of color artists to also perform. So this video created by Claudia Mercado documents performances that we've had through our past 20 years at Mujeres de Maíz um, live art show events. So uh, this piece here by Marisol Torres um, combines indigenous symbolism. So the great thing about uh, Chicana art and the artwork that's created in Mujeres de Maíz is that we're seeing this embracing of indigenous symbolism. So um, like here, this means palabra or word, and this piece is called Flor y Canto. It was actually the album cover for the In La Quech CD. Um, so we see that here, and also looking at this rattle, which has the goddess Coyol Shalqui. Um, Coyol Shalqui is very important to Mujeres de Maiz. We have the full moon Coyol Shalqui circles. Um, Coyol Shalqui is the moon goddess um, who um, comes up at night, and she's very related to the moon cycles, um, which Mujeres de Maiz looks at. And as we see some of the other work in the exhibition, we're going to see Coyol Shalqui um, come up a lot. This piece is actually um, created by one of the In Lakech artists, muralists, performers, um, actresses, and of course painters and singers, which is Marisol Torres. And so the key part of, of In Lakech is we're also the drummers and singers. And so aside from the floricanto and the flowering word, uh, the scroll that you see in the codices, and now you'll see the drum. And also, of course, the moon and the flowering words coming from the different women. Um, this was actually a gift from one of the other Mujeres de Maíz, Margaret Alacón, who painted the Coyo Shalqui as the stars. So some people say um, she's a representation of the moon or the Milky Way, and there's kind of different understandings of that. But whatever she is, she's also the Aztec dancer in the sky. It's from uh, full moon to new moon again, she moves in the sky and dances across the sky. And this is an image of the actual full moon circles that we have. Um, every full moon on or around for the last uh, six or seven years, it's been since about 2010, and there's actually a representation and a replica, life-size replica of the Goyal Shelf East Dome in City Terrace in East Los Angeles. Um, the only other one that I know of outside of Mexico City, and this is an image of us um, really connecting and reconnecting and doing um, talking circles and ceremony in the streets, basically, or on the corner of East Los Angeles. In 2015, we began this project with uh, Dr. Dion Espinoza at Cal State LA uh, doing an oral first story project of Mujeres de Maíz, where members of Mujeres de Maíz talked about their experiences with Mujeres de Maíz, but also uh, talking about that mind-body-spirit connection within the organization and how the organization gave space to women of color artists. Uh, when in 1997 those spaces were really lacking um, and Mujeres de Maíz was one of the first organizations to really have a uh, International Women's Day event um, in Los Angeles. So the oral her story is documenting some of those stories of members within Mujeres de Maíz and they were made into um, short little clips that participants and viewers in this exhibition are able to come and see. So really interesting about this piece also is that uh, Deborah Gatswali also creates on um, a painting of canvas, but also a weep bead. So this piece is a weep bead of sorts, um, and a cloth or clothing, like, similar to what both of us are wearing, but um, has created, she's created a weep bead of a head of the maize or of a woman. Um, and so that's really interesting, kind of different types of objects and really referencing the art and the culture and traditions that are referenced through clothing, such as the ones we're wearing. This piece is called Mujer de Maíz, it's created by Deborah Vasquez, and what we see in this image is this woman that is actually made of cord, um, and we see her heart open here in her chest, um, but it's also referencing indigenous symbolism, we can see indigenous symbolism in the piece, so looking at, again, that idea as uh, corn is sacred, but also that women are sacred, um, and they are the creators within themselves. Um, so that is represented within this piece. So this piece is the Botanica del Barrio. It's my own piece. Um, and it is 
Uh, intervention, a mobile art cart, a mobile cart for wellness and creativity, but also for herbalism. And the idea is that the cart can be taken around the community um, and can do workshops about wellness. So I have taken it around the streets and the neighborhoods, but mainly in cultural centers and communities and schools and colleges to talk about herbal teas and making, work, uh, making wellness blends or ways such as incense or sprays. I do sell my own line of, of uh, holistic items, so I usually have those out. But on this ex um, piece, piece and this intervention in space, you'll see uh, some of the items that I created, some of the books that have influenced or are important to me, and also some of the uh, blends that I made, and key items that one might use as a wellness person in the community. This was a project that was created with the local um, carpenter in Boyle Heights, Gabriel Guerrero, and the lettering was done by Lyle One, a, a graph artist and graffiti artist in the community for many years. Um, so as you can see, it has different compartments, um, so we're actually able to enhance different um, spaces here in an announcement of how uh, of plants and different plants and also drawers to be able to do the actual workshops. So it does move and it is mobile, and it's a mobile art cart and a project, Botanica del Barrio, which is really referencing our own um, innate and our community's innate knowledge of wellness and uh, ways of taking care of ourselves, of self-care and community care, and validating that in our native communities, our indigenous communities, and our migrant communities, so that we can go back to these ways. So far, the workshops have been really amazing with young people. They know a lot of wellness ways, but they don't know what's in the wellness ways. Like, they don't know what's in the tea that their mom or grandma gives them. They know it works, and they are confident in the well, in the remedios or remedies. And the older señoras or monolingual Spanish-speaking communities and migrant communities, communities have a lot of knowledge, but they aren't usually using it because they don't want to use it anymore, or they feel like it might be something from the past. So these workshops really encourage them to reconnect with these wellness ways, with these cultural traditions, and honor that I'm not necessarily the facilitator, but really, or the teacher, but I'm the facilitator of the knowledge to bring out their own knowledge and highlight it back to them so that they can connect with it. Uh, so again, the Monica del Barrio does workshops, um, has a whole product line, and so far this cart has been out about six times during the exhibition to different community spaces and workshops in the neighborhoods. So this is a piece called Chilone, or Chilone by Emilia Garcia. And what's really interesting about this piece is that it's a painting of another artist who's involved in Mujeres de Mayos, which is Lily Flor. Lily Flor um, is a performance artist, a muralist, and visual artist and performer. And she, for an arts education um, hearing at LA City Council, even before that, had created a corn dress made of corn husks. And so it was important for her as an artist, as an instructor, as an artist instructor, an arts educator, to really stand up for arts education. So she did a performance art piece at LA City Council and went in in this corn dress and performed or gave her testimony as an artist and an arts educator. Um, it made you know uh, the LA Times, and this is the piece, uh, an image of her in her corn dress. So Emilia Garcia painted Lily Flor or Lilia Ramirez in her corn dress. What's really beautiful and uh, really interactive and connected to our whole exhibition is that in the bay windows of La Plaza de Cultura y Artes that are on Main Street, Lily Flor also did a full installation in one of the windows with her corn dress and with her own art. So you can kind of see the connections between the exhibit and the gallery and the retrospective on the, on the floors here inside the galleries and inside La Plaza and also in the windows and connection. And that's another really key point which you'll see soon about our intervention and the work outside of the gallery including our programming, our platicas, our workshops on wellness and full moon circles, and a lot of the other programming that we did outside of the exhibition space, but here at La Plaza, including some interventions, which are just little political statements and nice um, discussions about thinking about things differently, whether it's at the water fountain, in the restroom, or on the grounds of La Plaza.